Good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord hath made and we will rejoice and we will be exceeding glad in it because God's good and he is worthy to be praised. Happy Tuesday. And uh, <laughs> somebody said top of the world to you, top of the world to you. Amen. Um, very excited about this morning. A, uh, a question was uh, put before me concerning passion and care. What's the difference? How do they work together? And I decided, well, you know, why not take some time to study it out and see? And I got something for you today that I think will bless you in your pursuit of uh, excellence in the kingdom of God. Uh, but before we do that, I want to say blessings to all of you who are joining us this morning. Welcome to the Grace Gang. I pray that God's riches and best will be yours as you seek him first. And I'm just always excited to, to have you to be a part of, of our discussions in the morning, have you to be a part of, of, our, of our growth and opportunity to just fellowship with God and learn more and more uh, from the things of God. Let me get my back here learn more and more about the things of God and just get excited about God and what he's doing and, and what he's saying in your life. And I just um, carry it with me all day. Uh, the God of the good. That was that was blessing to me, a God of the good. And so we welcome you this morning and uh, we say to you that all is well, um, no matter what. All is well. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Amen. And so I want to welcome you uh, to the Grace Gang this morning. And let's see who is in the house. Let's take about three minutes to send some blessings out. Grenada, uh, we welcome you guys and we send blessings to you. Welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. Trinidad, Tobago, uh, Albany, New York, the world changes nation. Lincoln, Nebraska is with us. American, America's Georgia is with us. Union City, welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. We just thank God for your Corpus Christi over in Texas, Katy, Texas. Texas is in the house this morning. We welcome you guys. We send blessings your way. London, England, uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. We welcome you guys today. We send blessings to you in the name of Jesus. Uh, Italy is in the house with us today. Nambia is in the house with us today. Delaware and Hollywood, Florida. And and uh, yeah, we, we welcome you guys. Raleigh, North Carolina, Memphis, Tennessee, East Point, Georgia is in the house this morning. Uh, we welcome those of you in Arizona, Connecticut, and uh, Hawaii is here with us. College Park right here with us. Um, Kenya in the house this morning. Uh, Glasgow is in the house. Toronto, Canada is in the house this morning. Uh, God bless you, my people from College Park. I love y'all, man. In the house this morning. And uh, Zachary. Uh, is in the house. Uh, Callie is strong up early this morning. Macon, Georgia. We welcome you guys. Welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. All is well. Henderson, North Carolina, North Carolina, excuse me. Um, London, Elk Grove, Maryland, uh, Los Angeles again. Uh, Cadillac, Michigan. Yeah. Tulsa in the house this morning. Uh, uh, Glasgow. Yeah, we, we welcome you guys in the afternoon over there. Powder Springs, Georgia, Sydney, Australia is in the house this morning. Franklin, Virginia, uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia. Uh, we welcome you guys this morning in Jesus name. We send blessings to all of you, man. We just agree in that you're going to have blessing. India's in the house this morning. God bless you guys, man. Or this afternoon, like I say, some of you in the afternoon, depending on where you are in the world, 
we welcome you to the Grace Gang. Hyderabad, Hyderabad, India is in the house this morning. And uh, a shout out to my family over in India, the Potters. I miss you guys. God bless you. The Philippines in the house this morning. Welcome. Joplin is in the house. Welcome to the Grace Gang. We send we send blessings to you guys in Jesus' name. We say you're blessed. Melbourne, Australia. Listen, we come to Australia 2025, man. Go ahead and get your tickets now. Taiwan is in the house with us uh, this morning. And uh, Mississippi, McDonough, Connecticut, Nigeria. We welcome you guys. Uh, Zion Church Fire Ministries in Atlanta. Welcome to the Grace Gang. Uh, Lagos, Nigeria. We, we come into to Nigeria at the end of the month. Uh, welcome to the Grace Gang. Praise God. Fort Worth, Texas. Norway is in the house this morning. We welcome you guys and we declare that you are blessed. Um, we pray for whoever that is diagnosed with breast cancer. We thank God that you're healed. San Diego, we welcome you guys. Uh, and so anybody that logs on to the Grace Gang today, man, we, we declare you blessed. We declare all is well in your life. And uh, yeah, I'm excited, man. I'm all, I'm all healed up. I feel good in my soul. I feel good in my body. I am ready to to hit the airways and 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 get to get to traveling, you know, get back in uh, these other countries and, and 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 churches in the United States. I'm so excited. Feel feel good. I'm fired up, ready to go. So let's go ahead and get Psalms 91, and then we're going to talk about passion versus care. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, should we be doing one or the other or both? How do they fit together? What does the scripture has to say about it? I think this is going to help you a lot. I think you're going to get to a point where you're going to, you're going to, you're going to really be blessed. Okay. So let's say this out loud together. Psalms 91 equip. Ready? Repeat after me. I will dwell in the shelter of the most high God. I will find rest. In the shadow of the Almighty. God is my refuge and my fortress. You are my God in whom I trust, and with great confidence in whom I will rely. God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I am covered and protected by His outstretched arms. God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I will not dread any disease that stalks in darkness, nor any disaster that strikes at midday. Because God is my refuge and, my all, and the almighty God of my home. No evil can befall me. No plague can come near my dwelling. God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me in my house. God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed. And kick anything that is evil from my path. Because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears. And he will honor me with his presence and power. He will reward me with long life. And he will show me his salvation. I declare right now that I am Psalms 91 equipped and all is well with me in my house. In Jesus name, amen and amen. You know, sometimes people say, well, wh wh what are you looking at? I got like three devices in front of me, man. And, and I'm trying to give everybody some FaceTime, but 
I probably ignore mostly Instagram because it's, it's, it's to the left of me and TikTok's to the right of me and Facebook, YouTube, X is in front of me. And I love it, dude. I mean, before I would never do this, not in a room by myself without some techie person around me, but God's good, man. You can, you can teach some folks some new tricks, right? <laughs> Amen. Now, passion versus care. I was talking to Brother Vernon about this, I think just yesterday, he just kind of mentioned it and brought it up. And I thought, man, that, that would be interesting to just kind of dig into it a little bit and maybe, you know, teach on it. But, you know, um, passion, let's let's start there. Passion is often described as a strong, intense emotion or desire for something or for someone. OK, the key words, an emotion and a desire. And you got to you got to understand when something's an emotion, if if uh, it, it you, you want to make sure it doesn't fluctuate. You follow what I'm saying? But it is an emotion. It's an intense emotion for something or someone. Now, it can be it can be a driving force. Passion can be a driving force behind creativity. It can be a driving force. Uh, behind ambition, and it can also be a driving force that that's behind motivation. Now, in contrast to passion is this word care. Care is an act of showing concern. All right. It's showing concern. It is showing compassion. And it's, cons it's showing consideration for other people. OK, when, when, when you care, you're showing concern, you're showing compassion and you're showing consideration for for other other people. Now, while compassion is often self focused, care is more about other people and their well-being. Let me say that again. Passion is often self focused where care is often focusing on, on somebody else. And, that, and that's pretty, that's pretty important. Uh, I think of the scripture in Philippians chapter two and four, he says, don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others. Wow. Don't look out for your own interests, but take an interest in others. And so this particular verse, it emphasizes the importance of caring for others and not just focusing on oneself. And what it does, it highlights the biblical principle of putting others needs before our own needs, uh, which is I think it's a key aspect of showing care, putting somebody else's need above your own need. I think it's a key aspect in showing care now. The question here is, can a person have passion without care? Can a person have passion without care? So while it, it, it is possible for a for for a person to have um, passion without care. But I, I would call that an imbalance. This imbalance then can lead to some negative consequences. And, and see, that's the issue. It's like passion, passion, passion. And if you have passion, passion, passion without care, now you're off balance a little bit and you can you can have some negative uh, negative consequences here. So passion without care can and will result in in selfishness. Passion without care. You know what happens is you're going to disregard others. You're going to disregard their feelings and passion without care leaves you with a lack of empathy. And so you're not really concerned about what happened to get this person in these shoes, what happened to cause this person to be homeless. Um, and, and, I, and, I, and I have to tell you something, man, if you're missing the care portion, you know, I, I just think that true fulfillment and that's where I am in my life. I'm looking for real true fulfillment. But along with that true fulfillment and success, um, I think that comes from not only pursuing your passion, 
but also showing care and compassion towards other people. And I mean, you look at you look at um, even some successful companies today. I mean, the ones that are most successful are the ones who really care and not just have passion for what they do. And in the body of Christ, you know, I, I think that, you know, when you question somebody's passion, uh, the real question is, do you care? Do you do you really care? I think about 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. Let me read that to you. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3. He says, if I could speak all languages of the earth and of angels, but didn't have uh, love for others, he said, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Now, this is pretty interesting because in this in this scripture, um, it underscores the importance of love and care. And that's who we are as Christians. Um, love and care in what we do. OK, not just passion in what we do, but love and care in what we do. It suggests that without love and care, others, our actions, you know, if we don't care for other people. Look at your passionate actions and you don't care for nobody. Um I don't care how passionate you are, um, you know, it, it's going to end up being empty and meaningless. You know, think about that. Your passion, you're passionate, but you don't care. You're gun ho about everything. You walk in the room. Yeah, yeah, let's get it. And you don't you don't really care, <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking, man, that that should be that should be um, a really driving force now. Here's something I thought about when I when I'm I was looking at this. Should we pursue care? Should we pursue because right now we're saying, should we pursue care? Should we pursue passion or should we pursue both? Now, here's the here's the good news about it. I, I think that I think that I think we should pursue both. Yeah. I think we should pursue both care and passion in our lives, because while passion can drive us towards our goals and dreams, care enables us to build meaningful relationships and and show empathy and make a positive impact on the world that's around us. And, you know, uh, real success is also about relationships. So I think I think we should should pursue both of them, both passion and care. So what happens is balancing passion with care is going to allow us to pursue ambition while also considering the well-being of other people. Wow. You can't throw out the fact that we've been called to be a blessing. Okay. And to be a blessing is all about being it's, it's other people. I mean, I, I'm blessed to be a blessing. Um, let's look at this scripture. I think this sums up Galatians chapter five and 13, Galatians chapter five and 13. Uh, he says, for you have been called to live in freedom, my brother and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to do what? Serve one another in love. So I believe what this is saying uh, I think it's trying to encourage us to to use our freedom uh, to serve people in love. It, it reinforces the idea that caring for others should be the central aspect of our lives, along with pursuing our passion. But you can't pursue your passions and leave everybody else behind. OK. You can't pursue your passions and and leave everybody. And I think that's what we are in the world. People are just really going after their passion and just leaving everybody else behind. I I, I know in the body of Christ that real success, the sum total of real success, and I think even some open doors in our lives are going to be based on can we passionately care? Whoa, did you hear that? Can we passionately care? You think about that now. 
I don't think that, you know, a passionate person, you know, somebody says, well, what's the characteristic you need to have to be successful in ministry or be successful on the job? Or I think, I think it's, I think passion is good, but I think passion should be the adjective to describe your care. Think about what happens. And I love when he says compassion. I think, I think that's a great word that combines care and, and passion. And I think um, that if we if we find ourselves pursuing the emotion of passion, okay, but we're not really caring for anybody, or we don't have anybody's interest in mind, I think you're going to be disappointed. I mean, you you go to the you know success seminars and they talk about you know choose something you're passionate about. Well. Yeah, I'll choose something I'm passionate about, but I want to make sure I can choose something I'm passionate about and I can apply that a passion to to care. So in my life, I want to I want to make sure that that I am um, that I make care a priority. And then to fuel my care, I want to I want to ask God to, to give me passion. I, I want to love people. I, I, I'm passionate about teaching the gospel of grace. I'm passionate about teaching people the word of God. I'm, I'm passionate about, you know, understanding, you know, being able to get an understanding, not settling for the cheaper, but digging a little deeper, you know, not just kind of, well, that's what somebody said. And so then we just make it law. Uh, no, I want to go for it. I want to, I want to, I want to see why somebody said that. I want to see if that's really what the word says. I want to dig into it. I want to rightly divide it. I want to close my eyes and see myself back in that time and age. And and I, I tell you, uh, I, I think it's important right now. The world needs the care of um, born again people uh, caring enough to operate in the gifts and the calling that God has put over your life, caring enough not to neglect um, your daily contact with God, caring enough not to, you know, I'm only concerned about my relationship with God and God meeting my needs and God, you know, and then you're, we're not caring about, about people. Um, I'm, I'm so, so proud of our church and, and our partners, you know, we go beyond just church stuff. I mean, we actually, you know, spend time making sure people have groceries and spending time getting people in help centers and um, spending time getting people help legally because, you know, that that's traumatic as well. Uh, and even now, you know, spending money on trying to connect with some outreach things that are going to make people better. We just recently connected with a, a digital technology school that's going to train people in coding and um, be able to offer them a job making decent money. I mean, so, you know, we at the same time are overseas, you know, uh, supporting orphanages and and supporting, you know, women who have been abused and and feeding folks. And, and, and it's it's a lot. It's like I don't ever want to be like where well, we're a church, but, you know, where is our care even for the people? And I don't go outside and forget what's inside. And so we we we, we want to care for people in our church and we want to care for people outside. And how do we govern that? How do we draw boundaries? Well, our boundaries are based on what God anointed us to do. We don't try to do everything because we're probably not anointed to do everything, but we do what we believe God has anointed us to do. I mean, we can feed you. We can, we can love you. We can do all that kind of stuff. And in fact, a lot of you have been logging on saying, I need prayer. I need this. Um, and so we had a, uh, uh, a prayer center that during COVID, you know, we, we closed it, but you know, we're going to reopen it. You know, I gave the word yesterday, man, let's reopen the prayer center. Uh, so that uh, there are lots of people that need prayer. I mean, one prayer uh, can just just turn everything around. And so, yeah, I'm excited about diving into this uh, this uh, study 
on on care and compassion. Uh, and I just I don't want an emotion of compassion. I mean, excuse me, I don't want an emotion of passion and not have that uh, coming from the root of care. Because I think if you care about people and you care about what you're doing and you care about your job and you care about your relationships and you care about, I mean, you can say you care, but you know, after a while, we're just gonna, we're gonna see, you know, we're gonna see what you say. My, I met my middle daughter told me, say, we can talk about what you talk, what you say and promise all day long, but I'm, I'm, I'm at the point where I have to judge it based on what you do. And I think that's vital and that's important. So anyway, I, um, I, I hope you got something out of this. That was that was only this morning. And I don't know if it, you know, you're doing cartwheels or anything, but I, I think it's necessary. I think it's a part of our renewing of our mind um, that in our pursuit in life, um, bring somebody with you, <laughs> you know, bring somebody up with you, man. Don't don't just make it all about you. OK. Um, and I think ultimately having compassion or care passion i like that having compassion or care passion is going to really move you in the will of god for your life and ultimately isn't that what we're really wanting in our life to discover the the will of god for my life to discover why i was put here on the earth what's my wiring i don't i don't think life ought to be just trouble every day all the time i mean if you if you're if you're the kind of person you think i don't even know what's going on i got trouble all the time ain't nothing been right for me for years it's like you're you you need to quit believing the story you tell yourself and you need to open yourself up so you can hear god and let him really show you what he's trying to do god's trying to get something to you he's trying to mature you in a way he's trying to grow you up in a way and you're you're fighting you know the growth quit fighting the growth get what you're supposed to get out of every situation turn the question around and quit saying lord why me why me and start saying all right god what is it i need i need to get about this okay uh somebody said singing the same old song yeah we got to stop singing the same old song and we got to recognize that God is a God of progression. He's trying to get us to certain places. So, I mean, if you're singing the Sangamo song and 10 years have gone by, you still telling yourself that story. I mean, dude, you can either wake up and, and, and knock the scales off your eye and just see that God is trying to bring you to a place in your life. He wants you to, to experience joy and happiness along with all the other stuff that comes. But it's like, Come on, dude. I mean, you know, what, what is it? You're going to have to be 100 before you get this thing. So let's let's let God grow us up. And 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 maybe some of that lesson may be get the attention off yourself. And just would you get it on somebody else? I, some of the quickest answered prayer and blessings in my life came when I got my attention off me. And I started getting it on somebody else because there's always somebody else that's got it worse than you. And once you can do that man you get that attention off you and get it on somebody else it'll be a blessing i saw something this morning when i was logging on about an eagle and that uh you know as powerful as an eagle is a crow has the the nerve to uh, get on an eagle's back when an eagle's in flight and start pecking at his neck and it's like the eagle doesn't turn around and and, and fight it or it's like he's not even bothered by it because it's like, why be distracted by this little you know, nuance? Why should I even be distracted by this this little thing? All he does is he continues to rise higher. He just continues to fly higher. And eventually, as he just focuses on flying higher, he gets to a point where the crow doesn't have enough oxygen to remain on his back uh that's a lesson ladies and gentlemen instead of you being bothered by the the little the little pecking that's going on in your life um just focus on continuing to fly higher and um you know eventually those little nuisance will just 
you know, fall off. I think sometimes we give too much attention to those to the small crows in our lives. And we need to quit giving attention to the small crows. Just keep doing what God called you to do. Keep rising higher. And eventually the crows have to fly off. I mean, and because they can't handle the height that God has taken you. My God, he taught me somebody. Oh, somebody getting ready to just fly high. Just fly high. Let folks talk. Don't be, don't, don't give your valuable time and attention to crows. You know, they, they peck, but it's just, it's just, it's just a little nuisance. Don't even give your attention to it. Just focus on flying high, focus on keep it moving on up. And as you move up, you know, crows can't handle the height that God is getting ready to take you. So don't, somebody said, what's the lesson for today? Don't give your attention to crows. Just focus on continuing to go higher and higher. And that's that happens a lot, especially uh, on social media and stuff. You you give your attention to crows. <laughs> Don't give your attention to crows, bruh. They're crows. Just fly high. And your height and your level and, and what you're doing and having a good heart to do what God called you to do. Uh, it, it takes care of the crows. It takes care of the crows. Uh, anyway, it's uh, Tuesday and you're going to have an amazing day today. And um, so add some care with your passion. Turn it into care passion and watch God do some amazing things in your life, your relationships, your businesses. Yeah. And uh, I think the, the the clearest way to start something successful, whether it's ministry or business, is to have the care. I'm doing something that's going to help somebody. I'm doing something that's going to bless somebody. If what you're doing only blesses you, I don't know about that. You got to pray about that one, bro. I want to do something that will bless somebody else. Care, passion. Amen. All right, guys. Uh, I love you. Have a great day today. Uh, you know, keep it Keep it, uh, you know, in peace, man. Keep your mind in peace. Your Keep your tone in peace. Uh, keep your body in peace and just enjoy life, okay? Um, enjoy life. Enjoy today. If you're in the afternoon, wherever you are, enjoy the rest of your day. Amen. Uh, right before we go, um, I, you know, some of y'all got to registering yesterday. That was good news. It's it's Grace Life. It's May, first part of May, June, and then July. We're there. Um, let's go with our registration. Let's do what we need to do. Challenge yourself. Ask God, Lord, uh, give me the finances so I can be a part of the Grace Life Conference. I mean, don't sit up there and say, you know, right away. Well, I can't come because I can't afford it. You know how it is. Well, come on, bro. Go ahead. Let's believe God. Believe God. Lord, you know, uh, if you want me there, I thank you. I received the finances and, and everything to get me there. So it's Grace Life Conference, the reunion. And that's what we're doing, having the reunion um, July the 11th uh, through the 13th, 2024. And all of you in Australia, we're coming there for Grace Life Conference July or, or excuse me, in um, it's a 2025, 2025 Grace Life Conference in Australia. It's April the 10th through the 12th, 2025. Australia Grace Life Conference. Really, really good. So we're we're excited. We're blessed. And uh, you are, too. I love you guys so much. Uh, I'll see you on Thursday and we'll talk a little about Mother's Day and the Mother's Day weekend that's coming up. Well, all right. Y'all have an amazing day today. God bless you.